So welcome friends, welcome back to the channel, always with Yunus Shafiri. In this video, we are going to see how you can implement the data store, the new library from Android as a replacement for the shared preferences in order to store simple data. Let's get started. So here, this is the main documentation, this place you will refer to a lot. What is data store? It's a library which is a replacement for the shared preferences, but it allows you for different things. The main thing about it, it uses the Kotlin coroutines and flow to store and retrieve the data asynchronously. So we will try to use that. Now there is two things. There is this preference data store and this proto data store. Both uses Kotlin coroutines and flow, of course, but the first one doesn't provide type safety, while the other it provides type safety. It uses something called protocol buffers to define schema, so you can use custom data type. In order to set it, you'll have to use only this one. If you are using like Eric Java, you can use Eric Java because the main way it gives you the data is using Kotlin flow. So we'll copy that, go to our Android project, and here, Go to the greater file and add it here at the bottom. You can use it here directly in your activity or your view model, but it's better to extract it to, into its separate class. Let's create a separate class for that. And let's call it our, for example, setting preference. Now you don't have to implement anything here or to extend anything here. Everything will be used internally. Like if you go here to the documentation, you will see how you can create an instance of it using this one. Now, before creating an instance of this preference data store, how this data store will store the data? Same as shared preferences. So it uses key value pairs in order to store the data, like the key and the value. Now here, let's copy that. Okay, let's just a simple setting. Now it will be used like the following. We will attach it, we will do an extension to the context, so we can call it everywhere. So now for that, in order to make our thing internally here, we have to do it like here. We provide our context here. Context, which is the context. Now we are going to use this import, of course. This preferences, it's coming from this one. Is this preferences data store? Okay, so I create it. It will give me the setting. Okay, it's called setting. You can change it here. Now, here in this function, because this is a function, okay, and it's turning read only property. Now, it gives you many things in order to do. Now, there is some particular things here you try to read that, it will be an awesome thing. The main thing about it is like, for example, the name, of course. The great addition was that corruption handler. Now, if you are storing the data, retrieving data, and you encounter something called corruption exception, you will provide a handler in order to fix that. That's an awesome thing. And there is another things like, for example, list of migration and coroutine scope and everything. Now, this is how you can create it. And now to create the keys, create the keys, you have to define it like the following. Well, usually, especially in shared preferences, we used to do upper case thing. For example, if I want to store like a simple value, which is the current language of the user, I call like the following preference, because it's preference. Now I have to define the type, which is an int string or something else. For example, I can do the int, but I have to assign the int preference key. I will give it the key here. I can give it any key, like for example, language pref. I usually do that a lot. This is how you can create the key. Now, in order to get the data and to set the data, you have many ways. Especially since you are doing this as a class, you can do it like the form. You can give it a function, okay? And this function, like for example, set language. Now, since we said we are going to use coroutines for that, we have this function to mark it as suspendable function. Now, here in this set language, what you have to do is you have to get a reference to the data. You can do it like the following, data store, but you have to do it like the following with the context. We can't delete that context because in order to create here this preference context, we have we need to have context. In this read-only property, it requires context as you can see. So we have to attach it to this context. We have to make it extension for that context. Using that data store, we can do the edit. And this edit, as you can see, it's a suspendable function. Now here, what you can do, it will give you an immutable reference. Like we can do something like following, we can add our language preference, and you can give it like, for example, as we said in int, you can give it five, for example. That's how you can set it. Like you can provide, of course, your parameter here, like your param, and it can be int, and you can set it, of course. The way to read the data is kind of the same thing. The problem here is that you have to get everything, all the data, and then filter out only the specific key you want. So what we have to do, like, for example, function get language. First of all, you will have to expose a flow because this will return only a flow. Of course, then. And since it will be an int, we will return int. Let me just define the type like that. Now, you have to get all the data, context data store, and then you do the data. It will give you a flow, It'll give you a flow of the preference. From that data, I will have just to map it, to map it to my thing. I get the data, so I can get only from it what? 
this parameters. Now the default value would be zero or something. Like if it is zero, you can give it something like the following. If it is not, you can give it zero or something. If it doesn't exist, as you can see, it returns something called not. I will give it zero by default. But this, as I said, it returns flow, so we have to return it like the following. And that's it for implementing data sort. Well, simply it will be like multiple things here. There is int preference. Let me check. There's int preference, double preference, string preference, boolean preference, float preference, like all the basic primitive things. In order to use customizable types, you have to use that proto data sort. Or you can use a string data sort. What simply you have to do is like you will have to serialize it using like JSON framework, like JSON, for example, from Google, and then store that string. And when you retrieve that string, just deserialize it to return it to that object. This is a trick I use often also. Now, in order to use that setting preference, simply you'll have to create an instance here. I'm not expecting any best practice on how you can access this setting preference from this activity, for example. This is an anti pattern, but I'm just sharing you an example. So this will be setting preference, and I will have to set it here, give it this context. What I will do is just observe things here. I can use this setting, setting preference in order to get the language will give me this one. I can collect it. Of course, I have to do like this in coroutine. Like I will just use the global context, global scope here in order to do that. Let me just launch something. I will just print the values we are getting. Okay. So I will just do something like following. And here I'm having like a simple button, I think, in the, in the activity. I'm using like here normal XML, not to show the example. There is this go button. Whenever I click on this button, and whenever the user click, I will just use the setting preference in order to set the language. But this is, as I said, this is expandable function. So we'll always need that thing here, like the following. And here I'm just going to give it a random number. So the default value will be zero by default because we don't have anything. And whenever I click, I will generate a number between zero and 100 and store it. Then I will see it immediately updates here. Okay, let's run it. As you can see, we have this application here. Let's have my logcat here also. As you can see, the default value is zero. Now we are getting this value here. I didn't just mark it. Value from preference. If I run it again, you will see that's the default value. Value for preference, it is zero. Now, whenever I do this update, I do go result. It will give me like minus, I don't know why I can't get this number. So if I rerun the application, I just change this one to use random between this two number because the previous one wasn't working. Now, if you go back to the log cat, you will see that the default value, because I use that is 77. If I change this go result, it will be 12, as you can see. And this is, we are getting this because of this collect behavior. If I do it one more time, it is zero. One more time, it is 87 and then 22, for example, and six. If I quit the app right now and re-enter the app, I must see six, as you can see, it's six. Now, where this is stored, where this value is stored. If I, if you go back here to the device explorer, and you are using this phone, if I go back to data, if I go here to data and search for YouTube data, of course, I think data, yeah. And here you see the packages of all the application installed there. There is this data store. Okay. If I click on it, I want to be able to see it. I don't know. It is preference. PB. So in order to read this file, I don't know how to read this file, for example, as you can see, like this is language, there is, here is our language pref, and there is this, I think it was six, I don't know how they are coding this six here, so there is like this specific thing to this preference PB, but this is the file where they are starting. As you can see, it's not encrypted, so don't store anything here, like sensitive, like a token for a session, for like a GW token or something like that, but Try to use something encrypted. There is an encrypted version of this, I think. Or you can encrypt it yourself, like encrypting the values. You can let this and you can encrypt the values. So I hope you understand how you can work with this preference data store. Like the things to remember here is that you have to create it like the following. You have to store and get the value like the following. Store it using expandable function and edit. And you have to get the values using the flow, but you have to get all the data and then filter out only the specific need. If it is not, just return zero, or if it is return default value, otherwise just return your value. And in order to use it, you have like to have like a routine scope or something. If it is in view model or something else, I'm just created this global scope in order to use it, to set it and to read the value. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.